Praise God. Hallelujah. During the course of um, Ask Anything, a question was asked. And I perceive the Lord leading me to travel in that line. Hallelujah. And it was a question around destiny. I don't know which week. I think it was the last week or so. And today, I want to commence a series that I don't know when it will end. <laughs> Amen. We are back to... Uh, uh, hearing the word of God now. Because you see, it is one thing for us to just communicate something that over a few lines. But as much as possible, I want us to go down to the foundation of things because the Bible says if there is a fault in the foundation, what can the righteous do? The next verse there tells us what the righteous can do. It says the Lord is where? In his holy temple. Which means if you can connect to the Lord and the holy temple, the foundations will be right. And that is what we are looking to achieve here. Amen. And today, I'm going to start a series which I title, Destiny is Not Given on a Platter. Hallelujah. We're going to be talking about destiny. Destiny is not given on a platter. You know, the question, I think, was how do I get destiny, isn't it? And I did say you don't get destiny. Destiny is not given on a platter. I think the first thing we must... The first thing, please, can you flip to the next one? I didn't ask you to put that on, please. Don't preach for me. Let me preach myself. Praise God. What is destiny? What is destiny? In fact, before then, give me Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. It says, for I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. To give you a future and a hope. That is why I say destiny is not just given on a platter. You don't just pick it up anywhere and then run with it. Hallelujah. Please, young people, I want you to listen to this very well, okay? What is destiny? Can any young person attempt? What is your destiny? Huh? God's purpose for us, okay? Any other person, any other try? That's a bit Christianese, but it's fine. Anybody trying? Yes? Our assignment on this earth. Wow, that's powerful. Anybody? Your destined future is your destiny. Okay, amen. Huh? A purpose on earth. Okay. What 
what has been designed to happen to somebody. Okay. Okay. The pathway for someone in the future. Thank you. When you look at the word, you will find out that people kind of play around with this because people look at, sometimes you see that you notice that people say, uh, or, or rather, some of the definitions we gave, as long much as they are great in themselves, some of them are just referring to predestination, not destiny. Amen. Destiny is simply the end destination. The end destination. Amen. It is the outcome of a predetermination or a predestination. Amen. It is the outcome of a predetermination or a predestination. It therefore means that everyone who is born on the face of this earth has what? A destiny. Hello? Everyone born on the face of this earth you have a destiny. God has a destiny for us. That destiny God has is the end goal. But with God, it is called what? Predestination. Because it is his plan, his purpose, his promise for us. So, let's put back that Jeremiah 29. Let's do a bit of study. If today all I do is explain destiny, then that's fine. It says, for I know the thoughts I think towards you, that is, God has an intention towards us. The intentions are now explained. They are intentions of what? Good, not evil. They are intentions or thoughts of what? Peace. Now, it says to give you a hope. So, the predetermination of God are his what? Thoughts for us. The destiny is what? The future and hope. Do you understand? Okay, let me explain again because it's like people are not seeing. My intention is that my son will be, um, let me choose one profession, medical doctor. <laughs> That's what every African parent want their children to be, isn't it? Okay, isn't it? Um, now, that is my intention. I gave birth to him. I want to, I have more, I, 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 I think I have a bit of right to determine what he should become. But the young man woke up one day and said, I want to be a musician. My intention for him is that his destiny will be what? 
a medical doctor. If he becomes a medical doctor, he has achieved my predestination. I have given him the hope and the future. Do you understand? He was not born when I started thinking about him being a medical doctor. When he now came, I wanted to actualize my predestination for him such that my predestination becomes his own what? Destiny. Do you understand? <clears throat> Only creators can predetermine a destiny. No creation can predetermine their destiny. Let me use something else to explain to you. Let's go to the automobile industry. <clears throat> Give me, tell me your best car, the car, your dream car. If you ever have, in fact, as in, amen, this one. Just give me one. Audi. This guy is cheap. You are too cheap. Rolls Royce, thank you. Ah! We're talking about cars here. You are telling me Audi. Wait, wait. We need to teach this man something. <laughs> Rolls Royce. Can somebody else give me one again that they want? Huh? Porsche. Lamborghini. Okay. Huh? Ferrari, okay, good. We have Rolls Royce, Ferrari, and, and Porsche. All right? Rolls Royce, Ferrari, and Porsche. These cars are very good cars. But for you to know the purpose of a car, you have to find out what the intention of this man of the of the of the manufacturer is let's take rolls royce let's take ferrari for example two very good cars two very expensive cars they go for over a hundred thousand pounds if not more but now the question is you must understand their predestination. Otherwise, their destiny might not just be great. What is Rolls Royce built for? Comfort. What is Ferrari built for? Speed and performance. Now, if you are in a Ferrari, And you step on it. And you're in a Rolls Royce and you step on it. Same thing. Same speed. Which one do you think will go faster? You are going maybe for a wedding or something. And you want some elegance. Would you go in a Ferrari? You will go in a Rolls Royce, isn't it? Somebody went in a Rolls Royce for her, for, for her prom. I'm telling you. Some people are fortunate. Blessed of the Lord. Look at these adults. Go back to your prom. You want to do prom again? <laughs> Praise God. But where am I going with this? I want you to get this. Let's take Porsche, for example, and take, um, what's it called, uh, Ferrari, both. 
Ferrari is built for the racetrack. Porsche is just an elegant car for corporate businessmen. That's the intention. But what is it? You're shaking your head. Tell me. You're the one who is into car. Tell me what Ferrari is built for. Huh? It's a race car. Is it? F1 people. I've never heard Porsche on a race, well, on F1. It's also a race car. But which one goes faster? Ferrari will go faster. Well, the point I'm making is, is get my gist. I'm not into cars, but I'm trying to just explain to you with what I'm limited to. If you give me scripture now, I can explain that one to you. Now, now, now the point I'm making is this. If you take a, a Rolls Royce, or a, like a limousine or something, and take a Ferrari and put both on a racetrack, you know that one does not fit. You will ask yourself, what is this one doing here? Because the predestination does not align with the destiny. That was last week scrolling through the news and I saw an interesting news of how a policeman arrested a man who took his sedan car, cut it in half so that he can carry his bull. He kind of cut it in half so that he can have a seat. He made a seat for his cow. Are you getting what I'm saying? Is a sedan car designed to carry cows? But he did. So the destiny of that car <laughs> does not align with what the manufacturer had intended that car to be. The hope and the future of that car. Somebody just said he's frustrated. <laughs> Amen. Are you getting the picture? I want us to establish that very well today because it is very, very important. Only a manufacturer can determine the, the can, can, can predetermine the destination or the of a of a of a of a of a of a of a, of a, of a product. However, even though he can predestine it, he can predetermine it, no creator can actually determine the destiny. All you do, all a manufacturer can do is to put all the intentions all his intentions, the purpose, the plan for that particular product in what? A manual. And then he puts it with the product and hope and expects that that product will be used adequately. When microwave came on, unfortunately, some pets died as a result. Because it is seen that microwave kind of is faster, the heat is there, and it dries things up again. And on the news, unfortunately, a lady took her cat after baiting it and thinking that this would dry up my cat quickly. Chucked it in the microwave. Are you getting what I'm going to? Is it the intention of the manufacturer of the microwave to use it as a dryer? 
But the destiny of that microwave has now been changed to become a dryer. Hence, it does not fulfill the predetermined goal. Do you understand? Huh? Therefore, the fact that God has predetermined everyone, give me Romans chapter 8. <coughs> give me Romans chapter 8. Let's see verse 28 of it. He says, and we know that all things work together for those who love God. How many of us love God here? We all love God. Amen. Now, to those who are the called according to what? His purpose. Some people think this one is the calling to be a pastor. No, no. There is a purpose for which God called you. There's a purpose for which God manufactured you. There's a purpose for which God raised you. Let me say this. God knows our number on this earth. Excuse me. You are number 5 million 700 and whatever billion. I don't know. Are you getting what I'm saying? He knows exactly. If the manufacturer of, of, of any of these cars or product know exactly how they are pro where their product is. That is why even when you buy a product, you have to do what? Register it. You've got to register with the manufacturer so that you can be covered under warranty. And your warranty is only active, is only functional when you use it according to what? The manufacturer's manual. Therefore, let's go. Those who are the called according to his purpose. We are called. Every one of us is called according to his purpose. Let's go on. For whom he what? For new. Before I formed you. Jeremiah chapter 1. So, before I formed you, I knew you. It means that God foreknows us. In the mind of a manufacturer, the product exists. Way before it comes into physical. He says, he pre, he, for, though, for whom he foreknew, he also what? Predestined to be what? Conformed to the image of his son. So he predestined them for what destiny? Conforming to what? The image of his son. And then he gave a reason. Why is that destiny defined? So that he might be the firstborn amongst many brethren. So God is looking for many Jesus Christ. God is looking to raise many Jesus Christ amongst us. Hallelujah. Go on. Verse 13. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. And whom he called, he also what? Justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. Now, it is one thing for God to call, pre predestine us. It's another thing for God to call us. It's another thing for us to be justified. Now, between the calling and the justification, that is where the gap lies. 
Those he called, he justified. But when you look at it practically from the scripture, God did not justify everybody. So we need to find that gap. When a manufacturer designs a product, he doesn't care who buys that product. He just wants you to do what? Buy the product. Just buy this product. That's it. So he's calling everyone to buy the product. The one who buys the product is the one who is justified. He has predestined, he has intended that people will buy. I'm into a bit of business and economics, so I'm just going to waver in between. The Jordan product, the Jordan trainers, even though I'm not so much of a trainer person, the Jordan trainers, When it was being created, there was a whole lot of risk around it. But the intention was that everyone, every young person, doesn't matter who the person is, will wear what? A Jordan. So, for as many that are called, if you want to identify, now there's a Jordan culture. You know that? It's a, it's a culture. There's, a, there's, so, the, it, there's this identity that you get with the Jordan, isn't it? It's a trainers. Don't worry. I know me and you, we're in the same level. Ask your daughter, she understands what I'm talking about. Praise God. <laughs> but what are we saying here? You cannot be in that culture. You cannot be justified amongst those people. If you do not first receive the call of Jordan to put on that shoes. And when you two put on that shoes, you are what? You are justified. And when you show up, my God, you are glorified. The glory of Jordan will be expressed in your life because you decided to what? Receive the call of Jordan. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? This room is quiet. Okay. Now, let's carry on. Because I have promised. We are going to stop on time. Amen. There's no way I can. Uh... Therefore, you find out that the mistake is this that I find is although you find out people will say, Oh, um, you can't change destiny. Oh, yes, you can. From everything I've explained to you. You can see that it is clear that you can change destiny. You can change destiny. God may have intended a plan for you. God may have called you. The gap between your call and justification is what? Choice. Choice. I gave you an example of my, of, 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 of my son. Oh, I wish my son will study medicine. And then he grew up and decided... Going into music. My predestination no longer aligned with his destiny. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? The same way in God, many of us are called. But our connection, God's predestination for us, differs from our destination where we are heading to. And the difference is what? Choice. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 30. Let's see from verse 15 quickly. From verse 15 quickly. Quick, quick, quick. See, I have said before you today life, life, life and good, death and evil. Look at that. I have set before you two destinations. I have set before you two destiny, two end goals. Life and good, death and evil. Go ahead. In that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and keep his commandments, his statutes, his judgments, that you may live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. Go on. But, 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 but if your heart turns away so that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I announce to you today that you shall surely what? Perish destiny. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over to Jordan to go in and possess. I come heaven on an earth to witness today against you that I have set before you what? Life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, the power is in your hands. I was a teenager when God started teaching me this. I remember a preacher came to our church one day and was preaching. And afterwards he started exclaiming and declaring words. And then at a the point he stopped and said, do you know your destiny lies in the hands of God? And everybody screamed, yes! And I shouted, no! My friends told me, myself, they don't know that I was going to shout, but just rose up in my spirit. I shouted, no! And my friends turned to me and said, what's wrong with you? I said, no, my destiny does not lie in the hands of God. My destiny lies in my hand. I choose who I give it to. I choose to decide if my destiny will align with God's predestination for me or not. It is my choice. It is your choice. God has predetermined you. It is your choice. Hallelujah. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may what? May live. What is God's predetermination for the children of Israel? No, his intention for the children of Israel. When you look at the conversation God had with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he said, to you, I do what? I give this land. Children will come 400 years and they'll come and take this land. <laughs> he promised them. That promise was there. I will give you this land. And for 400 years, the sin the seed destiny was lost. And here comes the children of Israel, mightily delivered by God. Set free and they're on their way to where? The pre-intended what? Destination. The Bible says about six million people left. Six million people left. Not even counting children. Watch this so that you see how serious this is. About six million people left Egypt. For where? The promised land. Of all the six million, how many got in? How many got in? 
Only two. Only two had the predestination matching their destiny. Does that suggest to you how many of us are in line with God's will? I want us to understand this and understand it very well. Because this is where we miss it a lot. And in the course of this series, if you can catch it, you can be sure that you will know that you know, that you know that you know that you are in the center of God's will. It's not about how much you have or how much you don't have. These days you hear people call, use the word blow. He has not blown. I say, what does, what's wrong with you? Where do you find that in the scripture? I've taught you what it means to be rich in this house. You've got to be stinkingly rich, man. I am stinkingly rich. I smell riches. I know you people think I'm pompous. Not. People, there's a difference between being rich and being wealthy. Don't call wealthy people rich people. They're two different things from a scriptural perspective. Are you getting what I'm saying? For those of you who do not understand that, go to the, go to, go to the beginning of the year. I think I preached at the beginning of the year. Kingdom perspective of riches, wealth, and prosperity. You must understand that. The fact that you have money does not mean you're prospering. Only two people stepped into the promised land. But God had intended every of these six million adults will get into the promised land. That's God's intention. Every one of you will get into the promised land. But only six of them. Two, sorry. What's their name? Joshua and Kelly. Even Moses did not cross over to Jordan. You see how dangerous it is. So when you see people on social media banging around with destiny, destiny, I'm like, these people have no understanding. They have no understanding, no clue. You must be able to say, I am in the destiny, I am in the will and the purpose of God for my life. You must be able to say that. Because friends, God's intention is God's intention. Amen? Let me ask you a question. Have we got many Ferrari shops in this country? Huh? Oh, come on, man. Don't answer questions anymore. Go and relearn cars. <laughs> if it's Audi you want, you stay with Audi. <laughs> Amen. Have you? Are there many Ferrari shops in this country? There are. There are, my dear. There are so many of them. Now, some of us did not, do not even know that there are many Ferrari shops in this country. Because, why? Although Ferrari wants you to come and buy. But only few will be able to purchase it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many are called. Whew, may we be among the few. In the name of Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? Don't be surprised if I come to church with Ferrari one day. Uh, you think I'm, I'm, think I'm joking? All right, watch me. I was telling my wife one day, I said, the only reason why 
I have not started coming with Bentley. Is that many eyes will be raised. I don't eat your money. You don't pay me in this church. I don't take a dime from you. So it is my money and I can use it to do whatever I want. Now that's where this that's where stupidity comes. I can use my money to do whatever I want. No. That's where we miss destiny. Because our destiny must align with the predestination of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Eh? It's not what you drive. It's what drives you. That matters more. Hallelujah. <clears throat> In closing. I think I'll just close here. In closing. Where. You have not. Establish, or rather, where you do not receive that destiny, it doesn't mean another person will not receive it. Eh? So please do not say nobody can change my destiny. It can be changed. Give me Acts chapter 1. I think verse 20. Put it for me there. It can be changed. <laughs> God intends good for everybody. He says, please give me in the New Living Translation. And I'll say, let's say. What does he say? He says, Peter continues, he said, this was written in the book of Psalms where it says, let his home become what? Desolate. Let no one living in, let, with no one living in it. It also says, let someone else take what? His position. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, you are not indispensable. Nobody is what? Indispensable. That's why I always tell people, it is a privilege to serve. It is a privilege to serve. I have always maintained, for as long as I have been in ministry, I've always maintained with or without you. It will what? It will happen. It will happen. Doesn't matter what it is. Let me give you a sad story. For you to understand. I started ministry in 1999. When the Lord asked me to start up something then. And about that time I started praying to the Lord. Because the only person that knows your call is you. You get to what I'm saying? And then sometimes you look foolish before people. And I started saying, Lord, I need someone to help me here. And one day, a guy walked up to me and said, the Lord is leading him to come and help me. I said, are you sure? He said, yes. I said, I don't have money to give you. He said, no, it's not about the money. I said, I don't pay people. And I said, I'm not so much of a nice guy. Those of you, you know now. Amen. And I said, no, that he knows that the Lord has asked me to. I said, okay, that's fine. Let's go. And we hit it off. Oh my God, we took that place. I stole. And God used us mightily during those times. But it came to a time when he started allowing certain negative influences. I will touch on this next week. And what happened to him, simply, his heart was turned against me. I tried as much as I could to rescue that relationship, but he was already gone. And one day I was stepping out of his room 
we were students then, university students. And while I just stepped out, I overheard him make a comment. He said, that is how they will all be going around uh, when there is exam. If, 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 if one fails now, they will say, um, it's ministry and all that kind of stuff. And I heard that. And I looked to the Lord and I said, Lord, you heard him vindicate me. And I left. Carried on with ministry work. I passed and I graduated. He had an extra year. Seventeen years later, he sent me a private letter. And his words were, I know God called me to support you. I know God called me to serve with you. But I blew it. And I'm sorry. After 17 years. Recently I was away on holiday and I met, ran into a friend who was his very close friend at the time. And I said, how is he doing? And life has not been easy. For the greater part of his life after school. No job, nothing. Life has been frustrating. And I said to myself, one decision. Because all I can point it to, and for him too, having sent that email, all that he can point it to is the one singular decision that he made. Amen. My question is, has he been replaced? Has he been replaced? Do we have people still serving in church? As my ministry died, <laughs> do, we have, do we have leaders in this church? Be careful. Nobody, nobody on the face of this planet that not be replaced. Don't raise your shoulder. Because destiny is not given on a platter. It's not automatic. It's not automatic. Hallelujah. It is based on so many premises. And those premises we're going to be exploring. This is just introduction. Amen. All those premises we're going to be exploring from next week. Have you received something today? Yes, sir. Let's bow our heads. Yes,